Okay, this is that crazy ramp problem that a lot of you had problems with. And basically, the um, initial scenario, you, you have two connected masses uh, on an incline, and it turns out that uh, theta, which is given, is sufficiently small, and M2 is sufficiently big that the system does move this way. Now, there's no, this uh, pulley is not moving. This, there's a frictionless uh, rope that just rolls over the pulley. So um, the connecting string has the same tension throughout. Not that it matters if it's, uh, if we solve this by conservation of energy methods or the work kinetic energy theorem. But if we go back to our old uh, acceleration, tension, balance of forces uh, approach, then yes, that it would definitely matter. But my point is, the system moves, and after M1 has gone up the ramp some distance L, uh, well, then M2 will have fallen some distance L, and uh, they'll both be moving at a speed we'll call V, and the reason that it matters that the, the tensions are the same is, you know, the Vs and all that good stuff would be the same. All right, um, what we're looking for, well, the problem asks you to find the change in kinetic energy uh, on the mass that's on the incline. In this case, that's M1. So, of course, we're going to be looking for one half M1, velocity of the system at that point uh, in time and space. Now, we could use, as I mentioned, we could use uh, conservation of energy. This will be the final scenario right over on this side. All right, so here we've got what? No kinetic energy. No work's been done by friction. Because, of course, there's friction in the problem. And we've also, but we do have some potential energy. That's what drives the motion. Uh, how much potential energy? Well, it kind of depends where you want to put your potential energy equals zero reference. And personally, I kind of like it right here. Uh, not to, there we go. Right, right there. Potential energy zero. Okay, so initial energy of course, equals total final energy. And all the initial energy we have in the system is M2GL. Now, after M2's been dragged up a bit, it's now got some potential energy. How much potential energy? Well, we need to find this height, which is L sine theta. So that's how much potential energy M1 will have. M2 will lose all its potential energy. That's what's converting uh, the system into motion, uh, giving M1 potential energy, giving both masses, uh, the, the, you know, they have the same speed, so giving both masses this much kinetic energy. And because there's friction, we're going to do some work. And work, of course, is force times distance gone, we're uh, doing work from friction, so we've got a frictional force, and the distance L is the distance that force uh, acts on uh, the, the incline. Okay, so what is the frictional force? Well, of course, it's mu times the normal, and the normal force in this case is our same old friend, if this is mg, this much is the normal force, this being theta, then uh, the normal force is M1G cosine theta. And don't forget, we've got the mu to make it friction and the L to make it work. So all that goes right here. Now, again, ultimately, we want to solve for this. That was what was asked of us. So. We need to saw, uh, we need to rearrange this whole equation and solve for uh, V squared. Now V squared then is going to be M2GL minus M1GL sine theta uh, minus mu M1G cosine theta L 
And uh, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. And we're going to divide by the sum of the masses. And that will give us the velocity squared. So in order to get the kinetic energy of m1, the change would be, it would go from 0 to this much. The 2s would go away. Another m1 would pop upstairs. And if you really wanted to clean it up nicely, you could bring a g and an l out of each of these terms. So you'd have m1, g, l. You'd have m2 minus m1 times sine theta minus the minus is a plus uh, mu cosine theta. And dividing that by m1 plus m2 should give you your change in kinetic energy acting on m1. Ta-da!